Welcome to Pro Practice, your guide to piano mastery. I'm Josh Wright, and today is part two of the tutorials covering the Chacon in D minor, BWV 1004 by Johann Sebastian Bach, transcribed by Ferruccio Busoni. And in part one, um, we gave a little background and then we went over bars one through 93. So we ended. <laughs> And we find ourselves right here on this tranquilo. So we will start there today and we will go to bar 198. Um, this beautiful. We'll end right there. That will be the beginning of part three. My daughter and I, uh, first of all, before I get started, I'd like to dedicate this tutorial and um, all the tutorials and performances I give to my beautiful wife. She's asked me for quite some time to learn this piece, so I'm so happy to be making these tutorials. This is such a wonderful piece, and I'm loving, I've loved it my entire life, but I'm experiencing even deeper, experiencing an even deeper love for it the more I play it. Um, and just a little sentiment, when you play something for someone that you love, I think you love it more too. So just a little interesting side note. Um, okay, so getting into this, I remember my daughter and I flew out to Michigan um, and we saw Sergei Babayan perform this. It was the first thing on his program. And where we're starting today, bar 94, was the most magical place of the entire piece. It was so disarming what he did. Um, so he's just coming off of this craziness. And then he actually played this first note loudly. And then it was this shimmering effect. So he was lacing together all these beautiful inner lines. And I took a lot from that performance. It was so inspiring. So let's start right there today. And maybe in the you know, in honor of Baba Ann, we'll we'll explore that interpretation. So very quiet after that F. Just a quick note of how I am placing my hands. I like the left hand thumb to go in between the first and the second finger. So the left hand is technically under the right hand right there, but the right hand's under the left hand right there. So um, I hope that makes sense. So basically the F is below everything in the left hand. But the right hand, second and third finger are on top of the thumb here. It's actually quite comfortable. And I want you to think of the three motions that we always talk about on my channel. Basically, the, the three efficient rotations or motions that your hand naturally does is doorknob turning, waving rotation, and up and down hinging. If you combine all of those, basically you're just going back and forth. So you're mostly doing kind of like this doorknob type of rotation. But you're going to combine it with a little bit of this waving rotation, a little bit up and down motion to make this really kind of long oval shape. So you're just doing these little semicircles, but they're more of long ovals. So, And notice when I play this, I'm stroking the thumb. This one kind of comes up and into the note a little bit like that. Not really like forcing itself in. I'm still quite gentle with it. It almost feels like I'm just catching it on the way back around to the thumb again. And then the left hand is doing just the opposite way. So you can really overdo these motions when you're first starting to get the hang of them. Now that beautiful harmony change. I don't think you need to accent anything in there. audience will hear this little shimmer, this little different effect. 
this one is the hardest measure uh, out of those three, 96, because you've got to replay those Ds. So I always thought of getting off that left hand quickly and making sure my right hand doesn't come in early. So all those repeated notes can sound correct. And then there, I take a little time. I lean into that slightly because I want it to resolve up to the A later in the measure. D, a little softer. And then, and then there is a little dialogue with those falling sixths between the hands. But I mostly just bring out the top line. Now here, watch my pedal cam. What I'm gonna do is change very gradually. I'm gonna be off the pedal when I get to this D. What the, and I'm gonna finger pedal. I'm gonna hold the notes, in other words. I'm not gonna do that. Because what that does is it allows the harmony to gradually clear, kind of blossom in a very beautiful way. Right there, rather than kind of a cut harmony, like <gasps> it sounds like there's a little gasp in there almost. And then I like this bottom line that Busoni marks with these tenuto marks. And this right hand, again, just think of doing this type of um, uh, doorknob turning and then you can really get it quite minimal to where from the side view, you can barely even tell. It's just this little twitch almost. So bigger than less soft re grow to there. Now I do like to bring this line out that, that Busoni marks with accents. This is another tricky one because it's not that hard to play repeated notes on the piano. It's really hard to play them very quietly so and be consistent. So I like to stay down in the keys. I don't like to be jumping way off the keys, but really, also very intimate with the keys, um, like playing on the flat part of your finger. And then the top line will come out, and I have a little trick there with some redistributions. Okay, so um, hopefully that makes sense. And real quick, bars 94 through 96, I like to mostly be doing a diminuendo, if that wasn't clear earlier. Sorry, that was terrible. And I might do a little pulses in and out so this is my main melody and it's going to resolve down to the d in 96 however within the measures a little crescendo you can do just a little bit of that and then maybe none here oh one thing i forgot to mention also in bar 96 Keep that A up there because you can take a little time to get this G and the consistency of is quite nice versus what Henley has. They have you putting it there, obviously to give you time to get to the G, but you don't need to be right on time because you're switching registers of what you've just voiced. So... Just a, a few thoughts there. Okay, now, bar 102, I do something kind of funny in here. So, starting here, I redistributed some notes. I actually did this kind of um, accidentally, but I think it sounds better. Okay, so what he writes is... this and you can do that replaying this D what I did is I did 
and then I played another A here, so that it was just one D on the bottom. I'm not changing any harmonies. I'm not even changing the placement of the notes. I'm uh, like in the hand, the chord, the inversions of the chords. But I am just redistributing one note. So I'm going. I'm playing. I'm playing single note chord, single note, and then I'm replaying an A. That seemed to really help me. I do not do it on the last one, on the 104. I do what's written because you're not playing that again. I, what I wanted to avoid, the reason I, I think I subconsciously just kind of did that, and as I checked it, I was like, oh, I'm playing that wrong, but I actually am going to keep it. Uh, a friend actually told me something similar in Rock 3. He's like, instead of doing... which can be very awkward in the hand. He's like, do chords. And as long as it doesn't change the integrity, the rhythmic fabric, the um, effect, I think it's okay. So th that's me being rogue and, um, you know, kind of a rebel here, but I think that actually might be a nice solution if you're finding... I just felt like it felt a little more clunky. Whereas that's so smooth. Okay, let's say that you're gonna do it correctly. <laughs> um, you gotta be really light on that pinky. So think of that as one motion and then you could even think kind of pulling in and out, out and in. Versus way I do that. I, I, I personally don't think that detracts from anything. I think it actually makes it sound much better, at least in the way I play it um, from my hands. So I'll go really slow so you can watch my hands. Sorry. And there, I like to do this one because I can connect that. And then I'll do four, one, two. Five, one, four, one, two. Five, one, four, two, one. And then just pretty, and then I do the same thing. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. Now, let's talk about shape. Crescendo, diminuendo, time there. So, crescendo, diminuendo twice. And I like a little bit of depth on the bottom note, and then crescendo to the top. And I like to take time as we switch registers there. Now that, that stuff, again, think of your bigger shapes. Sorry, I'm trying to do this with one hand, it's huge. One hand position, one, one chord is what I meant. Um, so. Less than crescendo. Something like that would be nice. One voicing thing that I do a little bit of is the D, A, B flat, C, B flat, A, B flat, A, G, A, E, E, and then to the D. And I think I was singing the wrong notes. Sorry, I'm a terrible singer. But you get the point. So down.
it's a nice little counter line as you're doing your larger shapes. Again, this doesn't need to be voiced really particularly because it's not that compelling of a line. It's just this beautiful inner line that we want to hear a little bit of. And so far as pedaling, I wait for the last possible second to make that change on that because you do want to observe that rest there. So let's do it again. And these are, these are a little confusing. You have the G and then the rest of them are A. So just watch out for that. I think I miss that sometimes. Same thing there. Five, four, one, two. 